Right when it seemed like Curry was going to repeat his antics from Game 6 of the Finals last year, plus with the refs calling ghost fouls like this one, the reigning East champion Boston Celtics threw an overhand right out of nowhere. Tatum and Brown snapped out of their cold spells when it mattered most, Big Al Horford made clutch plays as well, and the Celtics forcing Golden State into costly turnovers made the difference. That gave Beantown their 8th consecutive celebration. It goes without saying that complacency can't be acceptable if you're going to achieve the ultimate glory, but given they've extended their lead atop the East to 4.5 games, with Brooklyn being 0-4 since KD went down and Milwaukee being extremely injured as well, it's safe to say Boston is currently dominating the Eastern Conference. Conference. While Milwaukee and Brooklyn are really injured right now, as I said, let's not forget how injured the Celtics have been throughout this year as a whole. It's mind-boggling to believe that this team sits where they currently do when you take in that Brogdon, Brown, Horford, Smart, Tatum, and most significantly the backbone of the defense, Rob Will, have missed 61 games combined. Marcus Smart had a few rough passes down the stretch, and he frustrated Steph with his flopping, but those saying he can't be the point guard of this team are casual audience members. Given Smart is having the best playmaking season of his career, we'll get to that in a second. I talked about Smart's assist to turnover ratio in another Celts vid, but today we're going to look at some more numbers which display his value this year. We'll look at Derek White's unsung impact as a second string two-way combo guard off the bench. You'll see why Boston's defense has been so much better lately, and then we'll discuss Tatum's MVP chances, plus talk a bit about Jalen Brown, as well as Al Horford. Before that, just 11.1% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe. Please like this video for YouTube's algorithm, and follow at DFlowHoops on Instagram and Twitter. I might just follow you back. Regardless, thanks for your support. Let's get into it. So I'm going to admit, it's been a while since my last Celtics video, but of course this squad's accustomed to being a regular talking point on this channel ever since their mid-season turnaround last year, where they ultimately put up the greatest second half of the year record ever for a team that was at or below 500 prior to the midway point. Now this 22-23 Celtics squad faces a different challenge, consisting of sustaining the headlining momentum they failed to build up a year ago at this time. I'll be on record as stating that rookie interim head coach Joe Mazzulla deserves that interim label removed. It's been impressive how Mazzulla's kept his team collectively locked in. You'd think, given there's a ton of veterans who've made it deep into the playoffs many times, that there'd be even the slightest showing of a complacent mindset from this group, but that just hasn't been the case whatsoever. Evidently, since the start of training camp, Boston's been fully committed to building up the necessary habits, continuity, and on-court flow, which it takes to go the distance. Whether it was making the conference finals as rookies or getting to the finals as vets, since they've joined the franchise, Tatum and Brown have never shied away on the biggest stage. Whether they're hitting shots or not, they're always involved. Tatum's still 19 and Jalen Brown somehow aged 7 years more than him at age 26. In all seriousness, this group's electric top heaviness in terms of Jalen and Jason's combined scoring prowess off the bounce will obviously take Boston as far as they go. But Marcus Smart's production has been crucial to this team, and while he makes lackluster decisions at times, which may have cost Boston in a few playoff games last spring, his IQ for the most part I think is actually underrated. After this momentum cross to his offhand on Ben Simmons, who still does a good job to seemingly get Smart caught up in the air, Marcus instinctively whips a reverse overhead no-look to Rob, an innovative Missoula ran horns action with instead of the 4 and 5 being in typical horns position, it's Smart and Tatum, and watch how Smart simultaneously catches the entry and plants his feet laterally to get McDaniels thinking Derek White's gonna get it back for a handoff. Instead, it's a slight flick of the wrist bounce pass from Smart through the lane to the cutting Tatum. Great high-low action out of horns right there. Very next possession after a Minnesota bucket. I'm not sure how he found the power to get this two-handed bullet over Austin Rivers, who falls down, and my boy Jalen gets the momentum shifting jam. Most frustrating part about Smart from an opponent's perspective is that if you guard Smart too tightly, he's going to run back into you and nonsensically sell the contact. Mr. Smart is truly all about the show business aspect of the game. He had a costly turnover, which nearly got the seemingly out of it Warriors another chance in overtime on Thursday night, one of many mistakes that Marcus has been committed to cutting down. Nevertheless, Marcus's statistical output in terms of his playmaking matches the eye test. 
Bear with me as we get into some very advanced analytics here, but SMART is in, at the very least, the 85th percentile among all 450 players in assist points created per 75 possessions, passing efficiency, passing versatility, roll adjusted points per 75 possessions, potential assists per 100 passes, passing creation volume, passing creation quality, high value assists per 75 possessions, box creation, scoring gravity, and playmaking talent. So for those saying Marcus can't be this team's point guard, you my friend are a casual. It helps Marcus's durability when his backup is a man in Derek White, whose 41 blocks leads all Eastern Conference guards by a mile. No other backcourt player out East has even blocked 30 shots. In the win against Golden State, three clutch daggers from three of this team's top players in Jason, Jalen, and Big Al Horford sealed the deal. Coming off posting a career-high 19 rebounds, Jason Tatum's last eight games have seen him average 33 points, 10.5 boards, and 5.5 dimes per game on a very efficient 44-36-93% shooting split while being a plus 93. In terms of the statistical, leadership, and team success narratives, while I'm not going to jinx him or say it on the record necessarily, Tatum could be the frontrunner for MVP. The Joker, who we spoke on yesterday, may very well win his third straight, with Denver also owning a number one seed, while Boston did lose to the Nuggets. To take out the team that took down Denver in last year's first round, Jason amazingly just played the last 41 minutes of the game against Golden State, yet he didn't even break a sweat. Tatum's MVP case gets really interesting when you consider what he does for Boston defensively, ranking as the most efficient small forward on that end of the court. If you don't respect Tatum for anything else for whatever odd reason you may have, I mean, the guy does have his fair share of non-believers, but when we talk about durability, there's been no one more reliable in that aspect than Tatum over the last half decade. Tatum's played 1,194 more minutes than any other player since entering the NBA in 2017. That's the equivalent to 40 more games played than anyone else. Also, Tatum's anything but a ball stopper. He's averaging 333 less dribbles per game than fellow MVP candidate Luka Doncic. Meanwhile, one of the best two guards and two-way players on planet Earth in the shiftily decisive 27 point per game scoring Jalen Brown is just a few spots behind Tatum for the small forward defensive rating lead. It's pretty crazy that people call Jalen not even a top 20 player, and while I have a ring for what Kawhi did for my Raptors in 2019, as I made videos on he and my team's success all throughout that year, Jalen is obviously the more spry, all-around better player between he and Leonard in terms of as of right now. A blitz of the passing lane from Jalen to break up this handoff action between Jordan and Dre sees him take it coast to coast for the flush, a big sequence to get Boston right back in it. Those athletically slash highly aware plays regarding his IQ display the 26 year old phenom is a whole different animal. Jalen Brown is not to be messed with. Moving on to this beastly Big Al chase down swat on Jordan Poole, Horford was also backing down Wiggins and giving him the too small gesture reminiscent of his all-time dunk on Giannis in last year's postseason. While Tatum's shot sealed the deal, Horford's shot off a of JB assist was the clutchest dagger of them all. Despite their at one point all-time best offense slipping to number two behind Denver, that offense was at one point making up for their lack of defense by the way. Defense which thankfully has really improved as of late. The Celtics were nearly 20th in defensive rating not too long ago. Now they're number five among all teams in that area. With Robert Williams for 14 games, Boston owns what would be the second best defensive rating in basketball without him for albeit a bigger sample size of 32 games they owned what would have been just the 14th best defensive rating among all 30 teams it's not just the time lord though right here hacker of the system luke cornett's solid closeout funnels tj warren into Derek white who gets one of his 41 blocks on the year Derek's only six foot five but his six foot eight wingspan gives him an impactful reach that plus his timing make the down-to-earth former San Antonio Spur a massive piece to the championship winning puzzle. White clearly learned well under former USA basketball head coach, three-time coach of the year, and five-time NBA champion Greg Popovich. Championship habits which Derek has brought to Beantown, but perfect screen navigation from Jason Tatum right here, albeit off a weak and non-elusive slip from Simmons, Isolation clamps are shown off after that as JT stays poised on the Hezzy and gets a piece of Kyrie's shot. Cornette's gonna play fundamental forearm to back post defense right here as this man is just tough as hell to score around. Can't blame Clax for missing the layup. I think Luke Cornette is actually underrated. 
Grant and Tatum swap positions on the fluid switch, and Batman stance with just the right amount of top locking pressure while holding the drive in check, plus his quick feet for a big man forced the turnover. Sam Hauser gets switched onto Kyrie, but no man gets left behind as White comes over for the elusive strong side blitz. Great effort driven closeout from Pritchard, by the way. Speaking of whom, whether it's the number one or number 15 option with a sniper like Sam Hauser, who is playing really well early on and will come in handy for the playoffs, or a third string guard who would easily be a sixth man on about any other team in Peyton Pritchard, who provides the most undermentioned piece of value to this Celtics roster? You could say it's even Tatum based off the way a lot of fans treat him despite the two-way superstar production he provides. Maybe you go with JB or the traditional under-talked about role player answer. Leave a comment down below on your answer regarding that. Competing community speaks with your take. Number one through five ranked shoutout commenters get a free jersey or shoe of their choosing. Today's commenter shoutout goes to Shady, who says, as a Nuggets fan, I might sound a little biased, but Jokic is definitely very underrated by some people, especially by the media. I know triple doubles are not as crazy as they used to be, but come on, he's averaging a 25, 11, and 9.9 stat line. What separates this from Westbrook's MVP season is that Jokic is leading the Nuggets to the first seed out West, granted with a much better team than the 2017 Thunder. Not only that, but he's easily a top 8 or 10 passer of all time as a big man and he's solid defensively. I don't understand how people don't put him in their top three in the NBA for MVP or just in general. That's my take. Thanks for a well-written answer. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.